This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Today you'll learn how a barren desert is being brought back to a healthy habitat, but this desert is underwater, and it used to be an extraordinarily beautiful and thriving kelp forest. And kelp forests are important for many reasons. They are a center for biological diversity that rivals coral reefs or tropical rainforests. Hundreds of species of fish depend on kelp forests, and many hundreds of invertebrates also depend on kelp forests. Dr. David Wooding is a fish biologist with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Restoration Center. They're very much like being in a forest underwater. The light filters through the kelp as the fish swim through the kelp. They're very beautiful to experience. A big part of the recreational diving is dependent on healthy kelp forests. And David says that some kelp forest areas in Southern California have been reduced by roughly 70 percent. So there are still areas that historically had kelp forest that still do not have kelp forest. And in some of those areas, kelp will not rebound unless some active restoration is undertaken. So that's a little background about our story, which is about the Montrose Settlements Restoration Program. It was funded from a settlement with various companies that released PCBs and DDTs into an area off the Palos Verdes Peninsula in Los Angeles. These chemicals significantly impacting the natural resources in the area. While we're talking about restoring a kelp forest, we're also discussing the role sea urchins play in a kelp forest. Red sea urchins are large and have commercial value. Purple sea urchins have no commercial value and can actually play a negative role in the kelp forest. Over the years that kelp has been impacted, these purple sea urchins have reached a density that's out of balance with the kelp production. And the kelp have no chance to grow because they're immediately eaten by these purple urchins. So the area needs to be cleared of them, which is exactly what this project is doing. And the people doing the clearing are volunteer and commercial urchin divers, and they're having amazing results. It's really remarkable to go back to these areas that when we originally survey them, the landscape is bright and highly reflective because the rocks are all scoured and it's just this barren landscape. And two, three weeks later, and the rocks are covered with turf algae and you see the juvenile small kelp plants already starting to grow. And within a month, they're six or eight feet tall. It's really remarkable. The restoration project is a huge collaborative effort involving many partners, state and local agencies, nonprofit environmental organizations, commercial fishermen. And the reason why so many groups are on board with this is that each see how these kelp forests benefit their particular interest, and those interests are highly varied. And while not all of us live near the ocean, we can all help address issues affecting it. The degradation of these coastal habitats has a lot to do with how we take care of our coastline. All of the things that result in reduced impacts of the coastal ocean will help keep these things from occurring and will help make these restoration projects more sustainable. So being conservative with water, recycling materials, and also making sure that plastics and other type of materials like that make it to where they belong, not to the ocean. Continuing to press for treating coastal runoff before it's released to the ocean continuing to press for increased treatment of wastewater, whether it be household or stormwater runoff. Those are all things that protect that coastline and help these kelp communities thrive. And my thanks to Dr. David Wooding. And here's your Thank You Ocean Everyday Action, which actually refers to what David just mentioned. We need to stop pollution at its source by keeping trash and chemicals out of storm drains, and this includes pet waste. And remember, the ocean takes care of us. Let's return the favor. To learn more, visit our thankyouocean.org webpage and specifically our page on water pollution. I'm Jerry Kay.